Yep. No, look. Yep. How we doing, lovely people? Let's get this thing going. Anything crazy happen this uh week for any of you ladies? I have some stuff going on, but I want to hear from you. Go, go ahead, Nick. You got the floor. <laughs> Listen. Why did I go to Subway? And you know we caught. Oh, we she said the name the of the place lied. Go ahead, but she did too. You ain't even got to say a legend because it happened to you. Go ahead. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I go to get a sandwich, six inch. The guy told me what the total was. I'm like, okay, total was six forty eight. I go to tap with my card, and it says seven seventy seven. Lucky sevens though, but. He just said six forty eight. I look at my receipt and it charged me with the with the the sandwich with the tax was plus the tip. Okay, look, look, listen, wait, people. wait, wait, listen in audience. You can hear her rambling. She got receipts for real. Literally, the receipt. I'm trying to find it. No. <laughs> I'm trying to find it for you. But yeah, I, listen. I was like, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> you wait a minute. Six forty eight, a dollar twenty nine tax total with tips seven seventy seven. Okay, no, they, they got a receipt. receipt. She got, oh, got look, she just circled it. Okay, then we taking this to court. We taking like, it to court. Gotta be. Since when did these restaurants start doing this mess? And why? If I wanted to tip. I would have tipped him more. I would have tipped more than that. And then it had the nerve to ask me for an additional tip. Boom. Now, remember I was this talking about that? Time. Remember I was talking about that when I went to a Chinese restaurant and then they just going to add the tip on? Hold on. How do you, I don't even know how your service is, first of all. And I'm not even staying here. And how do you? Oh, no. It was a convenience fee. That's what I got hit with. A convenience fee. I conveniently walked in and they conveniently charged me for walking through their door, I guess. Maybe that's what all the restaurants are doing. But a lot of people aren't looking at their receipts. No, you're not. Please, people, look at your receipts. Because this is the second time I went to a really nice restaurant back in June. And with a bunch of ladies. And um, got my bill. I knew it was going to be expensive. Because, you know, we were drinking and everything. They added $8.29 gratuity and then when they brought me the um you know the receipt to sign it said tip like blank like usual but that is the gratuity I isn't it? crossed it out i was like do they not know what gratuity mean gratuity means tip so since you already added it but what i did because that late that young lady was exceptional she really was i gave her ten dollars on top of the tip that they charged me because it's not her fault it's not the server's fault we can't fault the servers for it it's the establishment but i was mad i was like but that's the only reason she got an extra tip out of me because she her service was that good she really took care of us but these restaurant we, people please 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 be diligent and look at your receipts even at sub sub Wait. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Amber D wanted to go into that. I seen your face. Like, wait a minute. Go ahead. Talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had the same experience. I was visiting my sister in law for her birthday celebration, and I was very dissatisfied with the service. And um, you know, my birthday girl, like, we were all this. She had rented a booth. It was like a lounge with like a balcony area. Oh, okay, y'all doing it? Yeah, doing it big and terrible service. And I was like, you know, I could tell she was like low-key salty, but she didn't want to cause a scene or whatever because it was her birthday and she was trying to stay cute. So naturally, I had to throw my cape on and be like, don't worry, I'm going to turn up. (laughs) I got your back. I was like, excuse me, where's the manager? Like, we paid for this booth and we have, are are you our server? And she's like, no, she's going to be right to you. And I said, okay. And then I went back upstairs with my little outfit and my purse on. And I had to go find her again and because they got our order wrong. And I was like, see, I was like, I'm going to go down there 
And I'd be like, listen, you need to, at the very minimum, you need to take this gratuity off of our bill. Because it's because she had to pay gratuity for the rental. Then we had to pay gratuity on all of our meals plus the drinks. And I'm like, you can't even serve us correctly? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So wait, so yeah. gratuity for you renting that section out. Mm-hmm. And on the meal as well, mm-hmm. and on the service, well, that yeah. is the service with it's supposed to be. Exactly. That's wild. And you know yeah. what? And you know what? Nick is so kind today, so we're going to take full advantage of that. She said it wasn't the server's, <laughs> it wasn't the server's fault. See, that's when, you know, do they still have staff meetings? No, I don't know, but I want to say I agree with Nick. It's not the server's fault, and I feel like it's businesses' uh, upfront way of passing on uh, minimum wage, like pushing their employees up to making minimum wage instead of that being incorporated into their normal wage. Because servers usually mm-hmm. make less than minimum wage because it's supposed to be like. Um, you're supposed to, they factor in tips, at least in the state of Ohio, it can be different in other states. Um, so I just feel like they they do that, right. They make less than minimum wage. So that automatically added in gratuity, I guess it's all the same, but it's something that as a customer, I feel like you shouldn't see and that shit. Cause in other cultures and other countries, it's actually very offensive to tip like, Oh, you don't think I make enough money type of deal because they're that because in their culture, servers make enough for a living wage. Black history moment. We know where <laughs> tips derive from. <laughs> I know y'all gonna be like, here she go again. Y'all look it up, okay? <laughs> I, that's the assignment. That's the assignment for the day. Y'all look up where tips actually stem from. Okay. Okay. And that's our culture, but y'all look it up. And that was a way of saying you did a great job of serving us. Let me finish my point real quick. Okay. Both of you guys agree it's the servers, it's not the server's fault. Now, I get it to a certain extent, but I feel like at the staff meeting, y'all need to be like, hold on, wait a minute. This is what's happening, and we're st- we're losing because y'all don't want to pay. Now, true story, I'm gonna say my niece since I got several, so I ain't putting her on blast, okay? So we go down to this uh coffee house. Yeah, I paraphrased. Because I, I don't want her to not lose her. I don't want her to lose her job. So me and my sister go down there and she's there. And we're so happy to see her. We knew that she was there. So we go. She We surprised her, right? So my sister comes out. We go down there. Boom. And we see her. So my sister requests that we sit in her section. They were like, oh, you'll be in her section. So we're there and we're in her section. This is great, right? We get there. We look around. The only black people in the whole place and the waitress is my, the waitress is my niece. Me and my sister are only black people in there. And my sister, you know, if you look at a different angle, you might, (laughs) you might not know. And my niece is similar to her, right? I guess I'm the only black one up in there. (laughs) Yeah, The one they can tell. (laughs) So we get there. And and then as we're talking, she did excellent service, not because we were her aunts or anything. Excellent service. Finally, I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, she the one that's cleaning. She the one, like everything. We'll come to find out we're talking. She's the only server in the entire place. And then, you're right. So then we go with the tips and we're just having a conversation. And she says with, you know, she's like, I usually get $80. You know, I take home $80 a night, but she's young. So I'm like, $80. My sister was like, $80 a night and you're the only server. And they get this. So she split her tips she has to split them with the dishwasher everybody in there hold on you're the only server so y'all already know where i'm going hold up you split with who it's just you fast forward we get we're getting ready to leave so i guess the manager she on break she just sitting there when you see my niece serving here running around this place okay you know i'm feeling i'm feeling but um, we gonna keep it out. We keep it. So she's um sorry everybody. So she was like, "Oh, how do you know? Are you related to her?" I said, "Yeah, I'm her aunt." And so my sister says she was like, "She's a great server." So my sister was like, "She's the only server." 
<laughs> Let's be clear. And I can't, you know, but my sister is like Amber D. It's like, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, don't do that. You know what I mean? Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this situation up because it was clearly unfair. And then you're looking around and, you know, my thoughts anyway. Not that I'm against anybody at all because I'm not. But let's be fair. Here's a young girl doing her thing. She don't see what's going on. But I feel like, you know how they got that shirt out like I am not my ancestors. I'm feeling like my ancestor. People that got on before me, I'm looking like, whoa, let's bring it back. Pump the brakes. Hold on. So. This is a solution that I have. Everybody got cash out. And now they're going to be wanting that. If you got to split your tips, and it's a lot of restaurants where they split your tip. You know, you got to split the tip, but your server, like Nick said, her server was really good. So is it fair to split your tip if you gave excellent service and somebody didn't? Your fault, you should want to do better. That's just my thought. So I'm like this. I'm not saying that I did this with my niece. But, you know, I'm like, $80 a night, girl, quit. I got you. (laughs) <laughs> but if you I think you should be able to have a conversation be like what's your cash app here go five dollars boom leave the place cash app them if they deserve excellent service so that they do not have to split their tips because that is not okay it, it's not but what no you, it's not I it see really is a, it, I see the analyst's just, pencil you see the analyst's pencil let's let yeah, her she get, she get, go, go, go ahead go ahead get, you got okay. the floor I would not recommend Cash App because depending, uh, and they just changed it, I would say a couple months ago, depending on how much uh, money is going through, transactions are being done on your account, they'll start, they, you have to file taxes. Well, you have to do that before. You say donation. Right. And then also, so I would say I'd be old school and I, and I try to always tip cash because a lot, like you said, a lot of restaurants do that. And if you actually want to make sure your server gets that money directly to them, you need to give them cash because even if you put a tip on your um, like a credit card bill, they will split that. Some some organizations they will automatically split your tip with every. They, 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 they still they do cash too, baby. They still do. And here's the thing: I don't want to put some. I don't want to make someone dishonest. And when if you give me cash, and I am that person, if you give me cash, I will feel obligated because that's me. I don't, I don't try. I'm not trying to do nothing illegal because I ain't going to nobody's jail. I'll be looking like, oh, it's a camera there. They know how much I got. Like I wouldn't be, you know what I mean? So to keep the person honest, I just, you know, you go. If I give you ten dollars, yeah, some people out there and be like five, but somebody like me, and if you in my bloodline, I already know we'll be like, oh, here and be fair because we don't like to be. You know, when things aren't just, we don't like that, so let me do right. But if you sit there and be like, oh, you guys, oh, you got to get, write it down. Like, come on. And for the cash app, yes, we had to do that. We talked about it, what, last year they were talking about a certain amount. But you figure, boom, boom, boom. And yeah, donation is the key. And speaking of donation, if you would like to donate to the show, you can do so. The information is below. Uh, you can cash app at Shop Talk with Mail. And you can put on their donation if you like. I still got to do the tax part of it. And also PayPal. We appreciate all donations. And again, it is located below going across the banner. And you can reach us on all socials. YouTube, you can see it. All right. You just had to put that. Look, let's just put that out Listen, since you I brought it up. With the tips. Go with the tips, like baby. Said, when I say all these restaurants are doing it, all of, listen, if you're using your credit card, Look at it when you go to sign. Like, I went into another restaurant to get my little smoothie. And it ain't even a restaurant. It's a chain. A lot of these chains are starting to do that. Went somewhere else to go get coffee. Tip. Excuse me? Huh? Like, what happened? You didn't, I didn't sit down at the table and you came and served me. I came to the counter. So, a lot of, of these restaurants... The even fast food chains are doing it. If you go in there, because there's another big one that I know that I caught, and I was like, "Oh, they they play too much." Um, if you go in the restaurant to the counter to order and use your credit card, there's going to be tip on there. And I mean, this is a big corporation where you they make too much money to be asking for tips. I was like, "Huh?" I felt like sco- a Scooby Doo moment. Huh? You like, like, hold on. That's perfect. Yay! Thank you, Rosie. She that, agreed. Yeah, that was no, perfect. She she like, Scooby Doo, what you talking about, Scooby Doo? I got you. Thank <laughs> you, Rosie. We we on the same, but we looking at that. Okay, we that, but we seeing that. Like, yeah, okay, no. Rosie, new co-host on Shop Talk. Cool. That's not cool. 
It isn't. It, like, it, 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 listen, yeah, because for one, at these fast food chains, you guys, most of these restaurants then up for some of them to like 12 13 $14 an hour. So no, I'm not going to tip you. I'm going to tip the server that's making below minimum wage. You're way above it. So no. why are they asking for tips? Now, Nick, I, I got I to gotta jump in here like the double dutch. I got to jump in the ropes. Okay. If somebody, if somebody makes, you got to, you turn, go ahead and turn. If somebody Good. is what? making $14 an hour and they have exceptional service, they deserve that tip. I just feel like that. Like, I don't care how much you make. If you treat me right and it's exceptional service, I will tip you over and beyond. There's times that I'll go to like um, our spot, down pay for commercial, but it's a coffee yeah. shop. And they are like so kind. I mean, so kind. And you can see how genuine they are because they're smiling. Those things matter. I'm like, do y'all got a tip? They're like, we're not allowed to take tips. We can't use like our cup because they said that they're using the product. That's what the girl told me. I said, oh, okay. (laughs) I had a red cup in the car. (laughs) I had a few. I had a few I did not use. You know what I mean? I got a pack always ready. So anyway, I was like, boom, I put the tip in the red cup. Bam. So hood. But that's, they started laughing, right? And the girl that was at the um, window just for the uh, listening audience, white chick, and for your imagination, white chick at the door. She was like, huh? All the black people that was working in there, they bust out laughing. They was like, yeah, I like that tip cup. So, And it wasn't from, they said if corporate comes in, they don't want you know their tips being in their, with their name, like you're wasting right. the cup. They're trying to save money. All right, I got you. Red cup, boom, send it out there. We got it, okay? So that's what I did. But when somebody gives you exceptional service or you remember that person, I think it's really important. I used to call. I used to, Now you got to write again. But then who's reading? Because work ethics has changed so much. Work ethic has changed so, so much. That's why I said I am my ancestor. I'm at work, not going to say the name of the place, which was really weird. I just want to get off on time. That's all I want to do. For my lovely people and my loyal, loyal people that listen to Be Inspired. I couldn't even do Be Inspired yesterday. You know why? I was trying to get off work. These chicks coming in, I don't know, I guess I'd be working on like the crappy floors or something that nobody wants to come and relieve me. Listen, I was like, what's going on? These two arguing. I was like, can you count? Like, let's count these narcs so I can get out of here. I got something I got to do. Right. The girl come over there. She was like, who's this person? And she said the name, which, so you was coming to check her. Like, I don't care about you coming to check her. Somebody need to take over my cart because I got to go. They going back and forth. They arguing. It's a full fledged fight. It's six. 45 in the morning. Like, you just got here at 6 30. I got, I'm like this. I gotta go. I got some people waiting on me. Like, I got something to do. So I looked. I was like, okay, they're going back and forth for everybody. Who gotta have the last word? Who had who needs the last word? It was really strange because this whole work thing is different. I was like, okay, so you're upset with your assignment. Sometimes you don't have good assignments. Give me the assignment that I need to have. It brushes, you know, it keeps me up on. What's new? What's changed? I was excited about a catheter. You know, this new, <laughs> this new straight cap they got. I was excited about it. Didn't I, did I tell you about it? I was so excited about it. Some people are like, I don't want to be catheterized. This is the field that we're in. Either you like it or you don't. But there are sometimes you have crappy assignments and every assignment is not going to be a great one. But y'all full, y'all fighting up in here. And I just want to go home. So finally, here I am. I'm the help. Okay, I'm the help. I, I'm not even employed with these people. I'm the help. I come. I finally was like, listen, <laughs> went into my mode, management mode. Right. I was like, listen, y'all can handle this after I clock out. I was like, but somebody need to come over here and count. Oh, okay. Then they was like, oh, okay. They came over they count. And she was like, well, I'm going to tell the manager. They going back. I don't care about that. Three, five. Like, right. I need to count so I can get out. They had to pay me. Pay my company pay me an additional 30 minutes because they were fighting. Now, you want me to write an answer report? No, y'all got enough people here. I, I don't have that. No. Y'all handle what's going on. Call me if you got a question. 
I'm out of here. I already did 12. Now I didn't did 12 and a half and y'all took 30 for lunch. Now you, pay me. you know what I mean? It's, it was crazy. So the work ethic is it. I, I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Nobody wants to work anymore. It's crazy. Everybody want to get paid to do nothing. Exactly. Absolutely nothing. Because that's what some of them do up there at the airport. They be standing outside supposed to direct traffic. They sit there and do absolutely nothing to get paid on their phones and everything else. I'll be sitting there looking at them like something's going on, huh? Yeah. Something like, something different. Like, something yeah, different is like happening y'all though. Outside, on your phone, playing, listening to music, but you're not doing your job. It, it's different. And, and get rid of those people. Get rid of those people. That, that's what I say. Just get rid of those people. That's why I was asking with the whole tip thing. You know, don't you have a staff meeting? Tell, you know, tell your people, listen, I'm not going to work here. Then you get out here. This is your company. It is not the public's fault that you can't afford the inflation. Why are you charging us? You decided to have this company. So boom, here you go. Well, then you work for your company. And then guess what? I bet you they see how hard they work because they got to get out there boots on the ground and do it themselves and then maybe you'll appreciate it and I know already I like male people aren't trying to work at all right now anyway so what's really going on you know what I'm saying listen sometimes you got to stand up and be like no I'm not doing this I'll go work over here or I'll go over here because we do have options it's an employee acclimated to that doggone unemployment when the country was shut down like a lot of people they, didn't get they, it though a lot of people they, couldn't yeah, get unemployment. A lot of people couldn't. A lot of people were still waiting, but they were paying more than what you would usually get. So people start getting used to that because I had somebody tell me, oh, I make more sitting on my butt at home collecting unemployment than I did on my job. I probably, I might not go back and I'm sitting there going, but you know, unemployment went out after a while. Like, Sometimes, but you know what? People do have that thought process of, I'd rather sit at home and by any means necessary, I will sit at home. I was having a conversation with someone and we're getting ready to get this show on the road. Okay. I was having a conversation with somebody and I seen them. They had a kickstand and I'm using air quotes for the listening audience. What's a kickstand? They were amputated. They had a, you know, one leg was amputated. So they had the one and they were saying, they were like, oh, yeah, I get this amount of disability. So I, I do have to ask this question. This is a genuine question. Do you really want to sit at home and do nothing that you're OK with having issues that could have been avoided? You know what I mean? Just to get a check. Listen, the car. Listen, and this is so real. The conversation, it really hurt my heart because I was like, wow. I was like, oh, yeah, they can get disability. How much do they get? Oh, OK, because I can't really see out of this, you know, Ah, but this uh, is this way. And I just was like, whatever, accepted it. Now, I don't know, you know, I asked the question because, and they know me. I was like, so you're okay with that? No, I don't like it. I didn't know it was going to be this extreme. So in his defense, I didn't know it was going to be this extreme. You know, you hear the stories of if you don't take care of diabetes and blah, 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 blah. Because this is, uh, these are from a diabetic. I hear, here's your male's medical moment. <clears throat> and they said, They didn't realize it. You know, you hear it. I'm going to let you go ahead, Nick. You hear like this can happen and this can happen, but they rather, they were like, oh, okay, I'm good. At least I don't have to go to work. And that's what he said. That's what he said. Like, so, oh yeah, I get this a hundred dollars more. So you are okay with being on a fixed income and having your disease depreciate and not do anything about it to help yourself, but make it worse so you can get an additional hundred dollars. That's where my mindset was at. And you know what they said? He, he said, I ain't think about it that way, but I ain't got to do nothing. I'm not trying to sit around with a kickstand and be like, oh, okay, just so I can get an additional check. Like what's wrong? I don't want to be blind just so I can get an increase in a check or people to feel sorry for me. But this was just, this was a specific person that shared this with me. And that's what I'm speaking on. Not everyone. Go ahead, Nick, what you got? I was going to say, like, I went through a period where I couldn't work. So that's why that's I a difference. was on disability. But, honey, when when some of my issues, I mean, because I still have the same issues, but when I felt better, th- that's why, you listen, your girl's a hustler. I was working two or three jobs and got kicked off disability. 
Seriously, they like, oh, you owe us. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, it was you, you wrote it. You'll get it back when I go to get Wait, on disability you? again. Um, oh, you, I owe you. Okay, you wrote it. Take it. <laughs> you wrote it as long as you can ride it today. It was like this. Your stop. Yeah, Bam. I did. I, and, uh, and I ain't mad I at you it until the wheels fell off, and I was like, <laughs> all right, now it's time to get a new one. Because yeah, I y'all know and, and that's I'm okay. an more hustler. And, and, and that's okay. For a while, I was sick and I could not hold a job. But hmm. and how about Your those people? How about those yeah. people who <laughs> genuinely need it and can't get it? They get denied and can't get it. And then you get because somebody. You got these fools that go in and, and they get it. A couple people that went into a hospital locally there on the other on, across state line when they was um, trying to get theirs. And this is what they did. They went to the hospital and with a bag and act like they were shopping, taking pictures off the wall. There wasn't nothing wrong with them. I can I they cannot. Hey, listen, we gotta get this show going. Today's topic is black white supremacy. Good morning to my lovely listeners. Good morning to my lovely listeners. You are listening to Shop Talk with Mel. Let's get this housekeeping out the way. If you want to call in and voice your opinion on this topic, which is black, white supremacy, feel free to do so at 619-902-2287-619-902-2287. And you can also text. Of course, we got to talk about who I didn't want to talk about, but he doesn't go by Kanye, so we're really not talking about him, okay? (laughs) And he stays in the media. What's your thoughts on how he's being canceled? Uh, I want to talk about it. And these people, your Candace Owens, your local people, I ain't going to say their name right now, but you have some people that's out there that's black and kind of stand up for white supremacy, and we're not talking about, we're talking about at the beginning. We're not talking about uh, Kanye doubling down because you've seen that now after they just stopped it with the whole banks and everything because we talked about that last week. What's your thoughts on that? On black white supremacy? He shot himself. He shot his own self in the foot. So, hey, it's like, dude, because your little. And I'm sorry, them shoes is ugly. That's my opinion. Okay. They ugly. But you got all these folks out here spending all this money for them. But it's his people. But yet still, he takes every opportunity to make us look like buffoons. Like, um, dude, I, I don't feel no type of way. I really don't. Like. Like they're and but and then on the flip side of that, I'm upset because this shows the unity of certain races to cancel out somebody. Why can't we get that same un- unity? Whenever somebody talks about a black person, you, you know, especially you know, famous or what, uh, famous. Whenever we are talked about, they're not canceling their contracts. They're not pulling out from them. They're not closing their banks down or shutting down their social media. Like, why can't we get that same courtesy? Like, okay, that don't make no sense to me. Go ahead. So I think courtesy is a great word. Um, And it's not about courtesy, it's about power. And this is a great example of Black people not being in positions of power. Kanye West has money. He doesn't have power. He's not in a position of ownership. Oh, he's a Black man that has all this money. He's so wealthy. He got money for days. He's got F.U. money. Actually, no, he doesn't. Um, And this is the situation that's reflecting that. And great point nick you're talking about how other communities when they find something disrespectful when they find something offensive they act and respond and retaliate and there are consequences 
I'm not Jewish, so I don't feel like I can speak on what they should or should not find offensive. They didn't like it. And guess what? They're in a position to do something about it. And it got done. So, and I personally feel like Kanye West is very anti-black woman. So I don't support him. And, you know, uh, it is what, not my problem. Oh, oh, well, uh, you know, have more (laughs) self-awareness. You you know what? Um, Here's my thing. I was, I was done with him and this is how we do it. We don't support him. I stopped supporting him. When what was that uh, Gold Digger? And I like Gold Digger. When he, you know, what I mean, that was my jam. I was like, yeah, that's me. But when he that line that he said, talking about some, uh, he'll be with you know, be with you, be with black people. Then he said, and leave your a for uh, a and white girl. Leave your and he white girl. and he did he did just that. And I'm like, okay, so you don't believe what you said? We got to call her. Okay, go ahead, call her. You're live on Shop Talk. So you're talking about Kanye West? Yes. That is probably one of the biggest commercials for mental health issues that I've ever seen. Okay, elaborate. Definitely has mental health issues. By, well, he's stated that he's bipolar, but I think he's going through some sort of episode right now because it's like everything that he had going for him is now falling apart around him. And I really feel bad for his kids. Okay. I, I can and I, go ahead. And I also, from what I read, I understand that they shut down the Donda Academy that he was running to help kids. And that that's a shame because, you know, kids needed that service and now they're not going to get it. Okay. I, I appreciate your call. Um, we're going to talk about that. Let's, let's pick that apart and continue listening to shop talk caller. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so I feel like he's doing a lot of his antics under the name of mental health. You talked about this. I did. I did. (laughs) And I'm like, so is that supposed to be the excuse? Mm -hmm. And it's not okay. You have to be held accountable. You have to be held accountable. Now to Nick's point when she was like, okay, why is it that you know, he could say what he want to say about black people. Why? Just because you're black, you get to talk about black. Because a lot of people that uh, commented and said, well, he didn't say anything about um, Jews. Yes, he did. And what he said to preface before he start, made his statement was blacks are Jews. And I guess he thought it was going to be OK. I heard it. I'm so tired of the weak mind. Why do I say a weak mind? I say a weak mind because you can see something. You can hear something with your own ears. And then if the masses say that's not what you heard, you're like, oh, okay. how can your mind change so fast? We have to be steadfast in what we see and what we believe. Everyone is different. I respect everyone's views. I do. But you cannot. And I understand even the caller saying he's bipolar. You know, yeah, he diagnosed. Listen, here's a whole lot of us that's even on this panel that are diagnosed. You know what's right and what's wrong. If you choose not to take your medication, you have to be be held accountable because this is given to you for a reason. Now, if you don't want to take it, be like, oh, okay, and that's the excuse. Oh, okay, I was off my meds. What? What? And then you have people, and, and I get it. I'm not upset with, you know, the mental health community. So we're supposed to rally around bad behavior and I'm using air quotes for the you know the listening audience we're supposed to rally around oh okay they have this issue okay this happened because they have this issue they said this because they're this way so listen I could say a whole bunch of abstract stuff and then what am am I supposed to say it under the name of mental health because I deal with this you know what I'm saying help me help me understand go ahead what you got You can empathize with someone who's struggling with mental health and going through an episode. Absolutely. Not give them a platform because, and I brought this up earlier, like um, it's fine that he has a mental health issues. It's okay that he's having an episode. He's having outbursts, whatever. Okay. Yeah. But you don't deserve a platform. You don't get to influence other people with your, while you, while you're spreading your toxicity and dysfunction. You can, we can, we can empathize, we can support you, we can send you prayers, but we're also going to shut your mouth. Now, the caller brought up um, his children. Mm. Yes, I empathize 
with his children. I empathize with the neighbor's children. I mean, this stuff, let's be real. It's a lot of people that suffer with mental illness. And yes, I empathize with the children. There are people who have not been clinically diagnosed, but we know a whole lot of people that suffer from Ill mental illness have yet to be diagnosed. The murderer, I empathize with their children. I feel sorry for their children. Get it. And I'm not saying, oh, okay, well, his children don't deserve the empathy. They do. And I do feel bad. The Don to school, I get that too, because that's our future. But let's be clear. You have this school, or I'm, I'll use me as an example. You know, I'm okay with being that. I have this school and I'm like, okay, I want to help children. And then I have an episode, but all these children that attend this school, they know me. So they're looking at me as an example. And if I am spruing toxicity, is everyone who attend this school going to sprue toxicity because they think it's right because I'm the owner of this place? Oh, oh, come on. I, I'm not mad at him. And just what Nick said, <laughs> we talked about this. As black people, now he already threw us way to the side, the shirt, white lives matter. Let's, let's break it down. Am I upset with that shirt? Not at all. It, it was, it was not a big deal to me, but it was a big deal to others because they felt like, okay, well, we fought, you know, we're fighting for this black lives matter. Finally, here's some attention. People are paying attention and you go and wear this shirt and tear apart what everybody mar marched for. Now, that's it. Me, I don't care either way because I don't support him. I, I don't. Did I think it was okay what he did to, what was her name, Taylor Swift? That was rude. Yeah. I, was, I was done there. I, I was done there. That was like, boom, piggyback. And then you had with, uh, remember Jay-Z? And Beyonce didn't fool with, remember Jay-Z was like, I'm done. These are, these were people, they were close. So he probably saw all of this and this is just me speculating. He probably saw this and was like, nah, we already see the rabbit hole. He about to go down, boom, separate. I am not mad at them because they know him. We're just seeing the unraveling in our faces that it's like, okay, wait. Now, did he cross over the line? He didn't overstep his boundaries when he sat there. We saw it. We saw George Floyd. And it was like, okay, and you sitting there talking about something he died of fentanyl? Did what hold up? These people wouldn't be convicted. Yeah, Wait a minute. These, these people wouldn't be convicted if that was the case. And it's like the little bit of justice that we got, you're trying to unravel it and make it obsolete. I have a problem with that. I'm like, now you didn't overstep your boundaries because one thing I'm not, I don't have a weak mind, and I want you guys out there. Pray for your minds. I got to say that. Pray for your minds because there are people that's trying to swipe you. There are people that pray against you. They pray that your mind does go haywire, you know what I mean, or that you lose your mind. So pray for a sound mind, everybody, for yourselves, okay? I just had to <laughs> issue that because it's out there. But you are not going to tell me what I saw I didn't see. There's no way. But I see you. Just like they have 12 jurors. That's why they have them. So you just because of the masses say, OK, this is what happened. You want him to persuade you? No. And you are right. He's going he's he's flipping it and discrediting our race. Now, we as black people, I told y'all what I tell y'all, we are forgiving people. And now look what's happening. Um, I wouldn't say we're forgiving. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of harsh. So I, I black like people like, oh, oh the, well, the whole world going against them. Let's bring them back. You know, um, yeah, because Kanye West should have been canceled a long time by the black community. And while there's black people asking, well, why was it okay for him to talk about the black community and why there wasn't there any backlash then and why wasn't he canceled then? Because it was the black community's responsibility to cancel him. Black people are mm -hmm. responsible for controlling the narrative of black people. So. Black, we, there's so many toxic um, public figures that are black that black people still make all these excuses um, and forgive and give passes for. And then we wonder why non-black people have no respect for us, which just violate with no regard 
because we don't have any regard. We don't hold ourselves accountable. We don't um, hold our history, our culture, our plight, um, our political issues in high regard and take it seriously. So, Listen. yeah, non-black <laughs> people are going to do yes. this exact same thing. And don't be mad that as a collective, I want to go ahead and say black men um, <laughs> think it's okay, or still support Kanye West, okay, and all his antics and his disrespect and disregard for black people. Um, and then be confused when a non-black man is like, uh-uh, no, no, you're not going to come over here and talk about us like that. You know what I'm saying? And then they have the power and the resources to respond. Other groups of men take their communities more seriously than black men. Well, what about the what black woman? Our, our black people, women period, women John. So, <laughs> they're just as bad. Okay, let's, I'm like, let's keep it real. Go ahead, Nick, what you got? Our, our people, period. Our people are the only ones that support foolishness and mm. I want to say the word so bad. But Go ahead, I got the bill. <laughs> Fuckery. Ding, 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 ding. Because a community will come together and rally their homeboy that just murdered somebody else. Oh, free so and so. That it. You see it on Facebook. Hear oh. people say it. You see him wearing the t shirts. Free my knee, so and so. But he killed somebody. They'll come together and rally for and support some mess. Right. Before they support what's right and what's going to make us strong. Like, what is wrong with y'all minds? So-and-so done killed that poor person. I don't care what kind of beat they had. Whatever happened, see, Mel, you, you right there with me. Whatever happened to back in the day where you just, listen, this right here, if it came to it. Because guess what? You can fight. You got your butt whooped. Oh, well, you live to fight another day or you used to be like, okay, afterwards it's done over with. And men used to be able to, you know, now everybody want to pick up a gun and shoot. Like, dude, like, and then you want to support the shooter. Right. I don't care what the issue was. Like, it's, just, it's, it's crazy. Like, um, it's, I want to, I don't understand. I don't. Like, I ain't freeing nobody. You said you ain't freeing nobody. I, I ain't know. freeing nobody. Free who? Right. Then he just shoot. Man, if he don't sit down and take his time, if y'all don't shut up and quit wasting my time, bye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to add on top of the free such and such thing. Then <clears> um, <throat> the whole I'm gonna you know if I ever become president or if I ever get in position of power, I'm gonna free the homies. It's uh, like they run the whole free the homies thing. It's like. All no. they is their freedom. It's like they're running from accountability. They, it's like, well, maybe they're not That's what it is. for a good reason. Okay, maybe he did, Maybe he's right where he needs to be at. Like, why is that the only like? I saw that on somebody's profile, and I'm like, really? And they said, if I was president, I would um, do something and free the homies. And I'm like. And I hope they don't vote for you. But guess who go vote for them? The family of the homies that's locked up. Right. And that's who's going to the polls. But we are out here and not going to the polls like I'm not really involved. And now you got me going. Listen, the local election is really important because that affects you directly. Those judges. And I pray to God that I'm never in front of these judges. But I make sure that I vote for the one that's going to be fair and not somebody that's suffering from menopause. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about last week. Okay, like hope they don't have menopause because they ain't one of their moves. Um, Amber D, would you read the comment over there? Uh... If another, uh, I can read it. Uh, if no, a, I don't see it. Uh, it's, Put it back okay, back. no. Um, if another black man steps on another another man's Jordans, he's ready to murder on sight. But when non-black folk turn off our cable, we are bowing down and pay it to get back on in our nice cooperative voice. That was from uh, Marcus Dillard off of Facebook. So, I understand. Do you understand what he's saying? I mean, yep. I, feel like I understand what he's saying, but I feel like that's not a great example. Like, it's a little bit apples and oranges. No, I don't. I get it. Because <laughs> you know? what, what it is, is petty to petty. Petty versus petty. Mm -hmm. Problem okay. is, and, and I'm, I, I put it up for 
People, I had it up already, though. Oh, okay. Petty to petty. Petty versus petty. But who is our supreme? So what he's saying is it's here you go. A black man step on another black man. The disrespect, just as Nick was saying to our own. But then somebody come to cut your cable off. You're like, oh, okay. Oh, yes, sir. How are you? Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and, and pay my bill with no issue. Now it happens more often than not. And he's not saying all. So I understand it. And I'm glad he used that analogy. You said apples to oranges, but it's petty to petty. Now you will kill somebody over something petty. You stepped on my shoe. I mean, very petty. You're going to, you're going to do some time. Okay. Seven. It depends on. Yeah. Now attempted murder. You, you know, it's uh, 15, 20 to life. But if you murder somebody it's seven. Okay. Well, watch this. You step on my foot. You step on my shoes. I'm going to kill you. Black on black. But if it's something that's like, okay, you owe this bill and you know you owe this bill. And then they come and they're non-melanated. You're giving non-melanated people more respect than you are your own. So if somebody melanated came to cut off your bill, you know, like I know, and me having books out there, I'm going to tell you, it was my own people that was asking for a deal. For $9.99? Do I have to pay? But non-melanated was like, how much is it? Oh, that's it? Here, I'm going to make a donation. So there's a difference. But go ahead. I just, okay, so I feel like, with I get the petty to petty, but I feel like, so initially with the Jordan's scenario, that the uh, one person did an offense, a small offense, right? That, that, that could be an accident. Exactly. I would assume unintentional, but maybe it was intentional. I didn't even think about that. I automatically assumed it was unintentionally stepping on someone else's Jordans, right? And then, but in the second example, it's you're at, you're starting off at fault, which is you didn't pay your bill. That's why they got shut off. So I feel like that's it's, that's what I meant. It's like okay, it's another situation where you're starting off as not at fault, and it was accidental, and then you responded to that white person or non melanated person with um you know, compassion or submission. I, and I agree. It's still true. I agree with that. But I just felt like, well, no, you're starting off at, with an accident and an, an innocent and unintentional versus the other scenario. You're starting off as you're in the wrong because you didn't pay your bill. Girl, so. how, girl, how many people listen? That was probably intentional. Like, how long do I got? I got to 12 before it's cut off. OK, hold on. I ain't paying that today. I'm going to do this. You know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> right. And then also, it's also an issue of just like, uh, like equal, you know, just two strangers and one person steps on the other person's Jordan versus uh, an agreement of goods and services. Okay. So it, it, okay. It, it, I, I get where you're coming from. That's why I was just like, it's not really to me the same I, I, example, but I, I get what he's saying and I agree with him, but I just feel like it wasn't a good example. That's okay. what I was thinking. Ah, that's good. It's a petty versus pettier, and it's like okay, I'm I'll look, I'll lose my life because if you murder somebody, you going to jail, okay? Prison versus if you don't pay your bill, it's just off. Going over to you, hey, you know what people doing now? They stealing the neighbor's Wi-Fi passcode and streaming and doing whatever. That's why Netflix. Yep, I told on y'all. Netflix charging. Remember, it was like twelve dollars. Now it's up to twenty. Like for real, next streaming service. Mm -hmm. I'm finding it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm finding it. What you got, Nick? I'm just still stuck on this. Like, it's we got to do better. We have to do better. But we're embracing we it. Do you see? We have to do better. We're embracing uh, him now. But that's why I said we are forgiving people. Uh, Kanye. Yeah. I do you that see it's, that? It's, it's 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 a certain demographic. It's a certain swat you know it's a certain chunk of the pop of the community that's embracing kanye um, not everybody is embracing exactly. him. exactly not everybody is embracing him but watch this y'all heard it like i heard it if you didn't go look it up because it's there and the clips is there where he says i can uh, and i'm paraphrasing i can do whatever i want to do and adidas still won't drop me boom Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then you have people to say, wait, wait. Then you have people to say, now I saw it. Boom. And you have people to say, uh, he didn't say that. Okay, well, that's your mind. Because I saw it. I heard it with my own ears. Okay, it was like a press conference or something to that effect. I can't even, I wasn't even really that invested because I told you I've never been a fan. I did like flashing lights, but I, that didn't make me a fan. Okay. 
Come on. Say something to that? But wait, here's the thing. And Adidas dropped his butt. And now he's like, oh, wait. And they have him now before he was a billionaire. Now they got him as a millionaire. But when you have that money, it's like, okay, is it really going to affect him? People want to be liked. People wanted to be want to be liked. Believe it or not, the richest person wants to be liked. So you can have all the money in the world. And if people aren't liking you, there goes the misery. That's why they be paying for stuff. And you see all these guys coming down now. And then they say, here, here's they, air quotes. Well, what about this person? They said this. Well, what about that person? Upset that a community decided to say, oh, we are not standing for this. There's boundaries. We're cutting you off. And so now the other people, the others are like, oh no. Well, what about this person? What about that? No, what about us? Michael Jackson, shout yes. out. Yeah. <laughs> like, what about us? I think That's it, what I was going to say. He he thought that, you know, he th- and I'm just going to put money and power. He thought he was Donald Trump. My, girl, he thought he was Donald he, Trump because remember in 1996 when Donald Trump sat on Late Night with David Letterman and talked about the Republicans like a dog said, they're stupid. I could do this. I could do this and I could do that. And, you know, and they're stupid. And if I ever run for president, I'll run, you know. Well, let me say this. That. I can't remember exactly, but he said if he you. would ever run for president, he would run as, as a, a Republican. Republican. Let me tell you. Be able to do Take it. Guess what? He ran. He made it. They put okay, him through there and they watch this. To put him through there Now, see, I didn't see it on David Letterman, but I'm going to take it all the way back. Sally Jesse Raphael. That's the show that I believe it was. Yeah, I'm dating myself. <laughs> he sat on that stage. He was not handsome guy, though. I ain't even going to lie. He was. Yeah, and he was on that stage, and that was in the 80s, and he said that he would run. That what you're saying. He that was Sally Jesse Raphael. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm about 99.9 percent I didn't see it on David Letterman. They probably brought David Letterman too. They probably brought that back up, or he probably still has that same stance. Mm -hmm. And it is the truth, and that's why people are running. And you see, he tried to run Kanye, I'm gonna say, because that's who he was at that time. And no, we're not talking about him since he said he doesn't refer to that. So yeah, I'm clear. So Kanye said he was going to run for president. Now watch this. All these people that Candace Owen, I believe, is a black white supremacist, you know, supremacist. That's just my views. I look at it and I'm like, okay, you believe that another race is more superior. Him, uh, Chrisette Michelle, what happened to her? Remember her? Wait, whoa, let's let's break it down. Wait, 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 wait. Chrisette Michelle, what happened to her? Do y'all she know her? Canceled. She got canceled because she just said the inauguration for Donald Trump. And is that wrong? I mean, let's it's be real. Business. It, it was, was to me, business. It was business. So I, I want because you're like, right. well, it's women too. But I do feel like there's a different standard for celebrity women than black women than celebrity black men. They get lots and lots of passes. You'll see the community rally around their dysfunction and their toxicity, make excuses for them. And like you said, do the, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about such and such? And that's why, you know, like you, all these examples you gave, uh, Mel, uh, he should have been canceled a long time. He's been, he been foul and flagrant for a long time towards the black community. Yes. And you got black folks still defending him. Mm hmm. Especially if you from his city. Um, I, this one guy, he on Facebook with it hard. And he's a, a DJ and he's a big DJ and he's, you know, Internet DJ and he's all over, all over okay. the United States. And he saying all kinds of stuff on his page and, and said he was disappointed in the people of his city, how they treating Kanye. These are the same folks that said the same thing about R. Kelly. Guess what? Yeah. He did what he did. To put himself because once you get in a big position where you are influencing people, you really need to start being mindful of what you say and what you do. Those both of them are sick. They have a sickness. R. Kelly, I'm sorry, y'all. He's a pedophile, period, point blank, in a conversation. We can argue about it all day long. You're not gonna win. He he's a pedophile. And Kanye is bipolar. I mean, like, yes, we can rally around them, pray for them, and get them help. But, like, that's about it. Like, all that other mess, like, 
How about, sorry you're bipolar, but you shouldn't have done this. Otherwise, we give everybody who's bipolar a pass. Exactly. And I know a whole you lot of people have. that are bipolar. So does that give you the right to act out? No. Oh, R. Kelly, so and I know Amber D., you had something to say, but I, R. Kelly, and I, that's coming up too. Oh, okay, well, what about R. Kelly? Well, what about this? Bam, R. Kelly, guess what happened? Black people did stick together and say, okay, this is an issue. But R. Kelly should have been canceled a long time ago. Here's why. I, mm. but, but watch this. This is me. It wasn't factual to me. I didn't see it. He wasn't charged yet. So this is all hearsay. So this man should have been canceled a long time ago due to hearsay where Kanye is actually saying this and I hear it. Yes, bye bye. But it's us that are like, oh no, um, well, he needs this. Well, they don't do this to this guy. Then they brought up Mel Gibson. Sorry, not sorry. He's okay. You know why? Because he has the money. And let's be real. You have like Donald Trump, Donald Trump. They were like Donald Trump, what, a billionaire? We know that. R. Kelly, not R. Kelly, uh, Kanye, they refer to, he's a, he was, I don't know where he's at right now, a billionaire, but you don't know Kanye the billionaire. You know Kanye the rapper. L let's take it back. And why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because look at it. Look at it. How many black people do you say their name and as um, how much they're worth? Billionaire. You don't. No, you don't. Michael Jackson, the uh, the singer. Mm -hmm. Even though he, you know, I don't know where his financial stay. I ain't seen no bank statement, so I don't know where he was at when he passed. Uh, the artist formerly known as Prince. The artist. You know what I mean? We, we never get that title. And I believe it's called chasing. You're trying to be seen and you want to be known. Let's keep it 100. Agree or disagree. Don't care. I don't care. Let's have the conversation. Mel Gibson, anti-Semitic, allegedly. And I'm going to just say that because I didn't see it or hear it. Kanye. So on the same playing field. Up. Uh, we're not, we're not dealing with that. But I got to be honest with the uh, Jewish community. They don't care. About the color, you did. You I was said something. Say Mel Gibson, he got, he got, he was in hot water and he lost some deals and he did, but he had the money to sustain to sustain himself. So you look like it's, he's not affected by it. You you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Kanye, is he going to be affected by it? Probably not. But when you yeah. want to be accepted, so I don't care how much. And that's what I look at, because that's why he keeps staying in, you know, the news, even prior to making this statement. This statement just gave him what he wanted. You want the attention? Bam, you finally got it. And why do we talk about it? Because it's trending. And we know this show we talk about what's trending. You know what I mean? We talk about what's happening. And so that's why we're talking about it. Because before, remember, I wouldn't even discuss him. I'm like, nah, I'm done. Here we go. How do you. How do you affect a person? Don't deal with it. Change your channel. We talked about that all the time. Am I on the whole cancel culture wagon with everybody else for Kanye? I'm not. I changed the channel a long time ago. I was like, here we go. But that's what's trending. So let's go. Look, look, let's just discuss it. And he wants the attention. Now he has the attention. And I'm sick and tired of us saying and making excuses for why he acted out prior to oh well he lost his mother how many people lost their mother even on this panel does that give you an excuse to act out oh well you know he has this disorder okay how many people we ain't got to say deal with certain disorders does that give you an excuse to act out or is it because oh okay well we didn't know they were dealing with that if we knew that then maybe we would we wouldn't have canceled them maybe we wouldn't be so upset with them no everyone has to be accountable everyone has to be accountable go ahead Amber do you want to read that sure Marcus Dillard of Facebook said the more controversial you become in the media the more money will be brought to the table Kanye knows this and quiet as, it, as it's kept there is somebody that will still get rich off of this I hope it's me <laughs> now I will there is one thing that I don't agree with them doing Adidas now those Yeezys and all that that was his vision oh. they dropped him but are still talking about 
selling his shoes. When now you, you're wrong. You, but the, the shoes I that are in stock. The shoes that are in stock, own, though. The shoes that are in stock. Let's be clear. So if you have I all this, say that. go ahead. I, I, I don't know, but my automatic assumption is that it's part of the contract, or like you said, it's what was already purchased. And I mean, that's that's what a contract is. Mm-hmm. So I mean. If I highly doubt what they're doing is actually illegal um, by continuing to sell his shoes because they went into an agreement and mm-hmm. maybe that was a part of their agreement. Maybe it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't, then he can retaliate or whatever. But more than I don't think that, that I think that's unlikely. I mean, um, and what my little point that I was going to make was that, you know, I just feel like this is an example of poor leadership. Poor decision making, foresight, poor role modeling. I mean, just like, ugh, across the board. Now watch this. Remember when LeBron made a decision? Nothing offensive. He made a decision on his own life. They was burning jerseys. Like, come on. The, The hatred. And I said, oh my gosh. I was like, he could have broke at that moment. And you might, you know, you happy up. Oh, there we go. Got these texts coming in. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it in a second. You have, yeah, there might be difference, but it's not because it's the reaction. So you have people that are, that reacted for LeBron for making a decision on his own, his own decision for his life. Nothing offensive. Oh, but everybody else was offended because he left the Cavs because he made a decision. So you're like, oh, cancel him. We're done. He's going here. The man wanted better for himself. And you hate this man because he wanted better for himself. And then you have somebody like Kanye who says whatever he wants to say, harm people mentally, could be emotionally. And then you want to give him an, give him another pass. Is it that we don't like, you know, we feel bad for the underdog? Because it didn't happen with LeBron. Where everybody was throwing stones at him. And it, I ain't even going to lie to you. It took me all the way back. I said, man, I said, if this was anything like it was for Christ, and no, I'm not comparing them to, but I'm saying, if this is anything where the whole world hates you, that's a problem. Let's bring up current. Colin Kaepernick. What did he do so wrong? Nothing but stand up for watch this. Rights. Watch this. Wait, and then I'm gonna let you talk. I gotta get. I, I want you to think. I want you to use your mind. You are that. That man is that powerful. That the president and don't forget, vice president is speaking on your name. You that that the president and the vice president. Is got a problem with Colin Kaepernick? So y'all sitting there with old Pence like, oh, that's wrong that Trump did that with Pence. Ah, no, they was on the same team. Quit playing games. Stop. Just putting that out there. Let's be real. All against a man making a decision to kneel. The president and vice president? Give me somebody. Give me somebody that ever spoke on a air quotes. Nobody. You got, where is the fear? Let's be real. So back to Nick's point. Boom, 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 boom. We need to do what we need to do for us. Because let me tell you, clearly there's power. Clearly there's I'm power. I always said there's power in numbers. Well, let me tell you. Right. And, and, and who's afraid? Who's, who's clearly you afraid? The president, the vice president, you that? You afraid? Like, oh, let's shut this down right now. Oh, hold on. State of emergency. He done kneeled. And you want to mess up, you know, stop his career. But, oh, this guy, Kanye, oh, he's on our side. He's our, he's our, um, what did they call it? He's our African-American. Right. My, he's my, he's my African. He's my, yeah, let me be clear. Yeah, my, yeah. My, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I felt like those two examples you just gave, I feel like to me, a lot of the backlist I saw from LeBron James, I'm not a sports fan, so I was definitely not invested. Um, and right, exactly. Blackstrap from uh, Facebook, he said he is, though, and I completely agree. 
Um, he really is their African American, so it's <laughs> accurate. <laughs> it's an accurate title. <laughs> but I felt like the backlash between um, LeBron James and Colin Kaepernick, it was definitely to me, it had racial undertones and overtones mm-hmm. on the top and the bottom. And um, it was definitely those like, oh, you need to stay in your place type of thing. Um, and so uh, there's there's that, you know belief that they have that position and, and that power and that, you know, how dare you make an objection basically or speak on issues concerning your community. Um, but again, that's like a black person speaking on behalf of issues affecting them and the community versus what's going on with Kanye, which is that a black person you know, disparaging and disrespecting the black community and black people and black history and then black people not correcting him. Right. So, you know, and then even with like Colin Kaepernick um, and LeBron James, if they were, if uh, black men have their own sports league, you you know, they could have went to that. They could have, you know, actually, like I said earlier, being in positions of power, like where you're, you're the one that's making the, those decisions. And I feel like just with ba- from my understanding of just like basic economics and community, everything is interconnected. So um, someone can influence you uh, like tangentially, like from the side as a supplier or something like that. But um, if you're in a position of ownership, you're more protected, you're more stable and you have more influence. Um, that you can wield on against other people, and Kanye West really didn't have that. And I don't, I don't know why the Donda School was closed down. Do you? No, I have no idea. Um, it, it, there, it, it's probably due to, and there's no telling. Due to it, it's due to what he said. It's shit. due to his air quotes anti-Semitic yeah. comments so, because he made anti-Semitic remarks. They were like, oh, we, we can close down. It's like a charter school. It's a private school. It's a private school. Mm. Private school. So I guess whoever, you know, even people people are funding it. Let's be real. People exactly. Are, so they're and pulling their funds out. And anytime a bank decides we don't even want your money, it's more to it. And I can respect that. I can respect that because what is it? Money and power. They feel like, oh, okay, you could do whatever. You, supremacy, money and power and racism. That you know, they all boom, boom, boom. There's that triangle. Come on, mm-hmm. and they're probably like, "Guess what? We're tired of this." And shout out to Chase Bank. I get him a shout out all day. I have more respect for that bank saying, "I don't care how much money you're bringing us. We don't even want it. If this is the way that you're going to act, we don't want your money." So kudos to Chase Bank to say, "Guess what? We don't even care. You think you have money?" Now you have power and wearing them ugly shoes and them high, high boots. That's because you know how much S you got in. Okay. How much mess you got that you done stepped in. Come on. Just by the way he dressed, you know, he mentally ill. Come on, dude. Like, for real. You got, you got to do what you got to do. And it's like, huh. And so even with these. With, did you think? What were you thinking? He, like, and. It's just crazy. And my thing is, if his mother was still alive, would he be acting this way? Uh, Probably not. But let's be real. We know with parents, parents set boundaries normally. Let me be clear. Mm -hmm. When your parents are around, you're as even as a child, you're usually on your best behavior. When your parents aren't, then you like it's free for all. Um. Go ahead, uh, Amber, you want to read that comment for the listening audience? Sure. So Marcus Dillard of Facebook said, when evil gets called out to the public for being wicked, then America gets hell-bent on trying to tame the black man. The knee-jerk reaction is to take away what we work so hard for, hashtag Holland. Listen. Punishment. I I 100% agree. And I feel like, as far as what you're saying, that's, that's, to me, that is a child. That is how a child behaves, and that's um, like an assessment of child behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a grown man. Mm -hmm. He's an adult. So his, oh, my, and like you said, we've all experienced loss. Like, that is not an excuse. Like, again, just excuses. It's a lot of coddling. 
And and it's not. And the thing is, I think the issue is that it's not about Chase Bank and Adidas and all these companies making the choice, Mm -hmm. utilizing their power to remove support from him. They are in a position to do that because that's and that's what they decide to do. The end. My issue for this situation is the way black people are choosing to respond to Kanye. And that's a lot of coddling, making excuses, um, giving comparisons. And then it's like, and then you want wonder why other people don't respect the black community. Like uh, it kills me. Yeah. I'm not going to give him the child psychology analysis and it, uh, excuse for his behavior because his mama died when he's a grown man. Mm-hmm. He's an adult. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we talk about that all the time with your own men mm-hmm. and now, their parents now and that's, their mama especially but in certain instances like like this one yeah you already know if Miss Donda was here he wouldn't all of this would not be happening and and that's a shame but yeah but then, but then guess what you make your own decisions you got kids you have influence over your kids and you're setting a bad example they're already in a screwed up family and let, let's just be clear they're already in a screwed up family sorry not sorry so it's up to you to set that good example because they got them their aunties as examples now now let me say this yes he has children and yes you can empathize with you know the children we talked about that but if you do something and you don't care about your children, do you really expect America to? That's now, true. I want to address um, in the comments, because we do read the comments here. Um, did you donate to Black Lives Matter? Let me, I'm, I'll make this statement. Shop Talk with Mel donates to a lot. And you have people who's like, oh, your money's going here, your money's going there. Donation is about the heart. You donate with good intent with hopes that they will put it where, it, or it's going where it needs to go. Same as tithing in the church. You tithe. Oh, the pastor buying this. I don't really care. I'm tithing. I'm doing my 10% because this is what I choose to do. What you do with the money, hopefully is for good, but that's my intention of donation or of donating is for you to do good. So just put that out there. Yes. Black lives, Ma- black lives matter. I'm for, and I'll say it and I've said it again. There would be no need for a Black Lives Matter if all lives truly mattered. Okay, go ahead. Let's get back on track. I just don't ignore the comments. <laughs> I'm like, let's put it out there. Yes, yes, yes. Go. <laughs> now, back to And Nick, let me say this too for the listening the audience. The views and opinion of Nick DeVoice with the messed up family is <laughs> the views of Nick DeVoice and not everyone that's on Shop Talk with Mail. Now, I will tell you this. Watch this, though. Watch this. On the outside looking in, every family dynamics is very different. And it, what may be weird to you or different to you may not be to them because that's what they're used to. And Nick, you have Nick, you have witnessed. I was told that I, I guess I was in the bubble. You remember? They was like, what? Shock with my thought. I was like, no, I just thought that was oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> so... Every household, when you are brought up, that is your norm. You don't know the yeah, norm until know. somebody like me or Nick or Amber D tell you, uh-uh, y'all doing what? That is not normal. I know families that walk around nude, both sexes. The mom, the dad, they just walk around nude. That's their normal. To us, we'd be like, well, to me, I, oh, wait a minute, that's not okay. Because then you start, you start thinking that there's something else going on, you know, reading into it yeah. when that's yeah, it their norm you know everybody is different so they probably don't see nothing wrong what what does holla say with a little bumpy grind (laughs) love her uh we got a comment go ahead okay so uh so marcus dillard of facebook said would we as the black community continue to coddle kanye if he actually had the malcolm x mentality instead of his quote-unquote pet mentality Mm, i don't know Right, I think that would it honestly, because um, I do feel like there is a very <coughs> small portion of black people in the community that are actually trying to better the community, grow the community, stabilize the community, and for the most part, they're ignored um, or completely unknown. So, no, actually, I don't. I think 
he wouldn't be coddled, but he wouldn't be supported. Keep your money. Our dollar matters. Mm -hmm. Y'all buying these Yeezys just as a status because let's be real, they ugly. And that's my view. And there's no way in the world I'm going to wear them ugly shoes. They are ugly. Very, my grandchild very. got some tennis shoes. They are ugly. And I'm like, are you buying it just as a status thing? Because I know you don't like these because these are yeah. whack. And just to say, oh, okay, yeah. well, I have this, so I, you know, I'm a certain status. I.e., back to, like I was saying, that's an example of wanting to be liked, wanting to be accepted. Like, come oh, on. So, Go ahead. Called? What you got? It's it's called um, consumerism. The problem, uh, that's a major problem with black people and, like, our financial education and relationship with money. Like, the rampant consumerism in the black community and just being focused on brands and purchase acquiring um, merchandise, but not actually have, but not build, actually building wealth. It's a depreciating asset, but that was, and then also I want to say as far as the Kardashians and his children and like different family dynamics, as an outsider looking in, when you have, I felt like there's this kind of like harem, madame vibe kind of going on between the mother and their daughters. And I feel like Prior to my research for our episode on sugar babies, I was like, whoa, that's horrible. But now I'm like, mm, it actually kind of makes sense. So <laughs> I feel like as far as observing different family uh, dynamics as an outsider, maybe there's things you can learn. And maybe as you know, you go through different experiences in life, you can um, your, your perspective on that particular subject may change or shift. But okay. it's. There's, I mean, it's, uh, in my opinion, as an outsider looking at it, their, the, their family dynamic is unusual, but not necessarily like toxic. Okay. Yeah. What, what you got, Dick? Come on, this is a talk show. We got, we about to hurry up the time going. <laughs> yeah, toxic. I would say toxic because look at all the men that, that mm. they have been through. Well, if they're your pet. That ensued. <laughs> Let's start with Caitlyn. Wait, 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 Amber Let's D. Let her finish Caitlin. her thought. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let's start with Caitlyn. Like I said, toxic women. Because the, uh, the men that they done ran through, one didn't decide he wanted to be a woman. The other one almost took his life, you know, his drug habit. And I mean, it started way before, but it's just like a lot of them. And then you have they came to the forefront. Why? Because of a leaked sex tape that that, that mama decided to capitalize on. I ain't mad at her. Okay. <laughs> and but they trying to cut the other. Uh, you know, now the other person that's part of that. Who, Ray J? Is speaking. Yeah, speaking his truth on it uh, to the point where he, you know, like a lot of things going on where this man ready to take his own life. It's it's a lot. So yeah, I'm gonna say toxic. Well. The Go ahead, Amber D. Go ahead, and then I'll... I feel like they... I, I feel like, you know, they're... I don't know about toxic, but damaged, and everyone has trauma. But as, um, you know, some of our commenters said, you know, those men have... To me, they have a pet mentality. And so... And they were... Tr and I'm sure we've seen some videos that have uh, went viral of, you know, Black people exhibiting that pet mentality. And um, I don't... Why would you not expect them to be treated as pets? By those people if that's their mentality so I mean, <laughs> just, you know and, and they wanted little beautiful mixed race babies and they got they got what they yeah, wanted and they got it what they wanted i would pet mentality listen y'all see what i'm out because i can't say it but i well i'm uh, not that go I'm ahead that i got the bell i got the bell <laughs> Cause I ain't gonna say it, but okay, because I'm like, we got it. Look, we got a listening try, audience, try, a broader try, listening try, audience. You want to pet mental? That's crazy, though. Like, well, but mean, you are not... like, it, but but then we've seen a lot of stupid memes where you have that one black person around a bunch of black, white people, and they, you know, pet. They wearing the collar, and 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 the white person holding it. You got me. Try me if you want to. Like, I ain't my ass. Try me if you want to with that one. That I, that baffles me. Why anyone, black, white, purple, green, will want to be somebody's pet? Listen. Listen. In sex. 
Some people like right. what they like. I was say, in like the, you know, the uh, BDSM. I'm freaky, but all right, they're freaky. Bestiality. Shh. No. Oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> no. That's nasty. <laughs> Listen. Hey, that's not, no, that's ew. Okay, so. Uh, but yeah, so, that's not, yeah. I Like, we are not pets. We are humans. We are, that's it. That's all. Don't but be watch this. Talk about no pet. Watch this. Okay. To, let's role play. Role play my. Okay, let, let's take it back. Look, I probably shouldn't have threw that in there, but let's take it back to where it was with the pet mentality. How many people need that? How many people was neglected? You know, they probably were neglected as a child. And they need that. They need that you good job. They need that. Pat on the head. Yeah, Pat to say, hey, we did this. Like, don't let's, pat me on the head. Just tell me good oh, job. That's still well, not. Oh, I feel okay, like go ahead. A, that, that falls into white supremacy. Because yes. As you said, you think one race is superior. So that means you're automatically inferior. And of course, as an inferior in an inferior position, you're going to um, uh, be sub, subservient to the superior. Um so I feel like that's a, a part of it. Would you like me to read the comment, Mel? One second. Um, I want to speak to the family. <laughs> the family that Rugal, we still we, look, we still bring Rugal into it. He can't stand this family. He's like, I'm done talking about that family. You look at it, and here's the thing. We always blame the other person, not mm-hmm. the person who allow it to Woo! be done. Boom. And Sing it's girl. like, why are we doing that? And here's... Here, here's where I have a question for everybody to just listen to. With that particular family, did they come in broken? Is that the type they're looking for that will bow down and say, oh, okay, you can do this? Because the fellas that I know, the fellas that I grew up with, they are not having it. Um, and mm-hmm. that's how I feel about with uh, Reggie. Remember when Kim was dating Reggie at the beginning and he thought he was going to go along? He like, oh, no. Look, I know who I am. I'm out. He yeah, left. He Her heart was broke. I think she really wanted to be with him. And it's like, boom. And let's, I'm going to go with Ray J. I'm going to put him on there because Ray J, like, psh, that was like a smash and dash type thing. And they done made a tape. She did everything he wanted. And I'm out. And then she was devastated because of this tape. Watch this. Kanye bringing it back up to make them relevant, to make their money on screening, you know, on the streaming network. This is just my thoughts. You're going to bring this up. There was another copy. And that's when Ray J was like, there was not like that was all fixed. You know what I'm saying? That was not what it was. There is no other tape. And no, I'm not leaking it and quit bringing me into this. That's what Ray J said. So Ray J wasn't there. So you did have people that came in smash and dash and seeing what was going on. And I'm wondering if they like a certain type of male and either you're in it or you're not. And it makes me wonder because these guys, they already have their fame. But did they need to be, were they not accepted yet? Were they not where they wanted to be? They're just like, okay, bring me into your fold to make me more popular, air yes. quotes for the listening audience, where I can be finally accepted. Right. That's where, that's where I'm at. Like, and I brought up Jay-Z and Beyonce. Let's even look at them as individuals. Jay-Z. Jay-Z is Jay-Z is Jay-Z. Take it or leave it. Do I need to be accepted by these people? Hey, if you like me, you like me. And if you don't, you don't. And you can hear that in his lyrics and in the tone of his voice. It's so chill, mm-hmm. calm, just like boom. And he just rapping and flowing. You don't hear him elevate, go all the way up just like Snoop. That's why I love Snoop. Everybody know I love Snoop. That's that's my husband, even though he married to somebody else. Okay. Just calm. Like, hey, this is what you get. What you see is what you get. Beyonce. She crossover audience. Like me if you like me, and if you don't, you don't. And how interesting, watch this. It is so many black people, much more black people, check the stats, that don't like Beyonce because she is who she is. And it's like, okay, boom. Either you like me or you don't. And if you don't, I'm still okay with that. And it's our people that seem to have an issue with her being okay with who she is and you not liking her. All right, now you can go ahead and read the comment. I just had to get okay. my piece. <laughs> go ahead. So Marcus Dillard of Facebook said, please pay attention to these commercials where there are no more all black families. Having biracial hair seems to be the number one priority to sell a product. Um, I would say that's a little late. I feel like those, you know, displaying the, 
lack of media representation of a black family unit. I mean, I feel like that's been going on since like the eighties. Um, and it started out with a lot of interracial couples, um, with, with a black man, with a non-black woman. And then maybe in the last 10 years, it's gone from, um, a black woman with a non-black man. But, um, the black family unit not being represented in like commercials and marketing and in media in general is that's been going on for decades at this point in this country, in my opinion. I'll tell you what's been going on. And if you want to see black families with black commercials, I saw was a black man with another black man. Now oh, yeah. that's the commercials that I see that are pushed. Right. Exactly. And I feel like that's the newest one where it's two black men together or a black man with a non-black man. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, the, the black family unit hasn't been in a media, especially in marketing for decades upon decades. Look, I'm about to take it a little deeper because that's what I do. Thought provoking. They have the whole Roe versus Wade, no abortions. Watch this. Tell me what you think. (laughs) Since he said, What he said about biracial hair, and they do show that. Shout out to Cream of Nature. Hey, listen, if you have a biracial child, Cream of Nature is a product you want to go with, okay? Because it works, real talk. Now, (laughs) no abortion. Who actually has, and I just want just opinions, what race usually gets abortions? (laughs) Come on, talk. I, oh, do I, I want to know. You think they're okay? What you no, think? I think? I think it's white women. Okay. Now, I believe it's white women as well. We have our children. That's what I see when you look at it. But Nick said blacks. Some people don't have that money to pay yeah, for it. Okay, what, wait a minute. I want you to hear all of it. I say wh- white women, non melanated, because they had the money. Nope, I'm not doing it. Um, Planned parenting. You know, no, I can't afford this. This is what we're going to do. Now, biracial, we know 1% black blood makes you, come on, black. Okay, I'm like, it's a talk show, come on. So 1% black blood makes you black. So these um, biracial children are considered black, even though they're trying to change it now. But be careful where it says biracial because they see what's happening. So if the majority is black, who, yeah, I'm going there. If the majority is black. And white is, air quotes, listening audience, is supposed to be superior. And if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. And you look at what's being put out here in commercials. Who's the winner? We see they fighting for their lives. Some of these non-melanated people like, okay, wait, this is a big thing. They might have had a meeting. They might have had a meeting, hear me clear, to say, oh, wait, we need to bring, produce more white children so that we can maintain and not become the minority because who's going to be our slaves? We keep dummying down. We're taking textbooks out. We're taking knowledge, black history, and I'm sick of this. Black history didn't start with slavery, so let's be clear. We're pulling these books out of school, so we're not teaching that. We are teaching white is superior. That's why I think that fight is so hard. Y'all better look at that. Look at it for what it is. And now it's like, okay, well, certain states are allowing you to have abortions right now. Certain states. And it's like, mm, who's fighting for this? Who said, oh, okay, we're getting ready to um, stop the abortion. Who is it important to? I ain't saying the right or the left. You choose because I don't deal with politics. But look at it for what it is. It's right in front of your face. I'm not going to say either way. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to say what the ultimate plan is. Do I communicate with certain people? I do. Do they tell me things? I guess I'm just that person. Yes, I will not disclose where I get a lot of my information from. Do I speak to people that I know who wear um, white sheets? I do. Do I know that they do? They tell me. And these, the two individuals... When they shared this information, I said, y'all got to be having a meeting or something. You know, I'm just who I am, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what is it? And guess what? The, re- the response, they didn't come out and say, yes, that's it. You know what they said? You on the something. Come on. So if I go missing, y'all better look for the people with the hoods. 
<laughs> like, yeah. But just, you know, for the sake of conversation, for the sake of the discussion, we got to look at things for what it is. I'm not saying be paranoid. I'm saying this stuff is here and it is very important for us to teach our children, black or white or Hispanic. Why are they building the wall? Whoa, the Hispanics is coming on. We got to build this wall and stop because they're becoming the majority. We need to still be in leadership. Well, go ahead. I want, as far as that, I think definitely because this is in other countries as well, is you can be a minority population and still be the, um, you know, in positions of power, in decision making. Like, so you're uh, in a dictatorship. In a dictatorship. Right. A dictatorship. right. And then, oh, right. Or like an oligarchy type of thing. Or, and I forgot right. what it's called. Uh, I, it's something. It Chrissy, but anyway, um, so that, and I do feel like as a layman, just observing, I feel like the whole anti abortion thing is being pushed by uh, mostly white people, particularly white men. That's what I'm observing, and I feel like even though you know, you can look into the history of abortion and Margaret Sanger and all that, um. You know, it was started in black communities to help control the black uh, the black population. Uh, but then white women started going and having abortions because we can have a whole another conversation about the perils and pitfalls of motherhood and marriage as it pertains to women. It's not this rose colored glasses type situation. And I feel like um, just the way, you know, it started and with the intention and what it's become now is the same thing with CRT in schools. Uh, because now what we're seeing is that uh, more and more black people are black women are pulling their children out of public schools and doing homeschooling of their of their black children. So even as they have this intention, uh, a, a planned strategy of whatever it may be, you know, we don't know what the outcome will be. And it's one of those things, you know, no weapon against me. Weapon against me form shall prosper. Um, so even look, with like, I know this one, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Thank you. I got that. Look, I know that one now. Right. I be yeah. jacking up. I be jacking up some scripture, but I got that one. Yeah, so, and I think you know. I think, and even then, if we're saying, oh, it's because it's white men and they have a plan. I mean, shouldn't you have a plan? You if should have a plan. You should have a plan. Have a plan. But guess you what? Know. Can we play the game? That's it. Can we play the game? Yes, have a plan. But my defense is going to be this. If that's your offense, my defense is going to be this. Nick said it at the beginning of the show. It's power in numbers. So you got to watch the numbers. Let's be real. I love the fact that we're a democracy. I am here. They'd be like, oh, go back to Africa. You mad you don't like it here. Why you want me to leave? I'm staying. It's power in numbers. I'm here and I'm going to teach mine. And even if you don't homeschool, because a lot of people are trying to uh, stay above water so that, you know, they have to work homeschool. When you get home, it's called homework. Hello. I used to have to do it. I was mad about it. I ain't going to lie to you. I couldn't stand it. I'm like, I just got out of school. Why I got to do this? I told you my mother made us. We had to do 10 words out of the dictionary. It benefits me now. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that word. Yeah, boom, I know what that means. I did not like that. And this didn't start just in high school. It was elementary. Nope, oh, you won't be just going outside. This is what you're going to do. I'm like, man, I just finished school. Let me hurry up and do what I have to do. I had a plan. That was her plan. That My defense was, all right, I know the rules. Ain't nothing I can do. Let me do what I need to do so that I can go outside. And make sure you do it right. Because guess what? She was going to read it. She was going to look at it. You know, she was going to do all that. It took some extra time. And some people feel like, oh, okay. And I, single mother, I told you, my father suffered, I told you guys before, from mental illness. So, single mother. And even those who have, let me put this out here too. Even those who do have the father in the home and they suffer from mental illness, that's a single mother. Mm. It's a single mother. So, just... So that you know, right. you look at the family and you're like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. It's a single mother. And that's why you'll hear me say certain things when you was like the black man. What about the woman? Because the woman may be the one making the decisions because if you have somebody at home that's sick, mental illness, if somebody's sick, you're still doing it all. Okay. Now, she checked it and was like, okay, boom. All right, this is right. You will not going to sit there and just jot some stuff down and think all is well. You, it takes work. 
and my mom worked midnight shift. Midnight shift, got it going. She did it. Kudos to her. I ain't mad at her. She did that thing to make sure I had what I needed and to make sure, you know, to her, the best of her ability. So every family have a different dynamics and they do certain things. But for my younger generation, my younger parents, TV can't raise your child. Y'all seen the movie. You seen the movie Cable Guy. That's real. That, Y'all better watch that. I looked at it. I, look, I sat there. I was like, oh, and this guy, what was wrong with his mind? Oh, no. His, he was raised by television. That was wrong. Everything was a movie. And it's like, here mm-hmm. we go. Was he socially accepted? Socially awkward, but accepted. You know what I mean? So you got to watch and you have to take time. They got so many learning games and, and, you know, toys out there. But guess what? Your child is not going to know how to operate them if you don't take the time to do it with them. And just because, okay, well, you went to school today. Okay, here go my break and this is all I'm going to do. No, after school is homework. If the teacher didn't give you homework, they don't even send books home no more. I ain't even lying. I remember mine. I was like, for real? Like, boom. So I really had to do some homework. So you couldn't even read the instructions. It's like, okay, you want me to do what with this diddle sheet? Right. You have to, right. Yeah. You have to do the homework with your child. It's called homework. Take time. It is not the teacher's responsibility to teach your black child black history. Please, people, educate your people in your culture. It's not. And I don't know what's going on in other households, but I'm just saying this. Like if your child is an Indian child, your child is an Indian child. OK, here you're going to school. Then you come home. It is not the teacher's job to teach your child Indian heritage. So it's up to us collectively as parents to teach our children. You have to. And Child, I'm, you know the powers of me would die, double death, come back and, and die again if they taught any other history other than their history. Than American history? In school. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we they used to. Black history, it is, that, that we would used not to. go over well with a lot of parents. Let me you say this. That. Shout out to East High School. East High School, Youngstown, Ohio. They did. I went to Cheney, and at that time it was predominantly white. I wanted black history. They didn't offer it at Cheney because it catered to the community, that mm-hmm. community. So, okay. Now, if I wanted to go, you know, get black history, I you know, had to go to East. But back then, you couldn't do the whole transfer thing. You had to go to the school that you were into. But guess what? So it was my mother's responsibility. I wanted to do it. And this was in high school. I knew about it. I knew about it because, and it, it intrigued me. But I, we got a ton of books. Still got a ton of books in the bookshelf. Not online so that if the computers crash, your book is gone. Tangible books. Tangible books. And I want to put this out here because i seen that there was a comment a while back. And they asked, well, did you do your research? Yes, I do. I do literacy research, not just media research. So let's be clear. I believe in looking in a book. I believe in that wholeheartedly. So, yes, the answer is yes to that comment that happened before, because I know they listened to the show. Um, You want to go ahead and read that comment, Amber? So, Blackstrap of YouTube said, I'm Black, and right now in life, I'd rather be a Republican. They got us so hooked on Democrats are trying to help the Black community when it's really the other way around the longer Biden stays in. All right. I love that comment. Let's let's shop talk. What you got to say to that? I feel like uh, rep- uh, currently because, you know, if you look back in the history, like it yeah. kind of pops as far as who's like actually supporting the black community. But I feel like rep- currently in this moment, it's actually Republicans and it's really about promoting, um, you know, like self-reliance and independence. We were and Republicans in the past. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Right. And so and I feel like the Democratic Party is kind of a basis of appeasement and excuses and enabling, which doesn't actually help you. Where So it's kind of like the uh, teach a man to fish and he'll fish for life. Give a man who'll fish for eat for a day. Oh, I'm so happy you are here. I feel, look, I feel superior. Somebody else that don't know these scriptures like me. <laughs> but we get we get the gist. I get it. I relate. Yeah, yeah, but we know it. Yeah, I don't know what to say. So I think mean, <coughs> Democrats are just like we'll give them fish, we'll give them welfare, we'll give yes. them yes, you know, to keep them <coughs> subjugated and 
complacent and content and will do um, optic stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll show respect and appreciation optics, but when it comes to actual power, mm-hmm. actual influence, actual control, mm-hmm. like, no, 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 right? Whereas Republicans are like, you know, be independent, be self-sufficient. Um, we're going to support, you know, small businesses. It's not like they're like only, we only support white small businesses. It's like, if you're a small business, you're going to be supported. You know, even like, how Republicans are gun are so pro gun, and it's like if um, and it, I we've talked about this before, but as a black person and particularly as a black woman, I am so for Second Amendment rights. Like it is important to be able to protect yourself, you know, especially when you feel or actually are unprotected. Like we need guns, you know. So I feel like um, you know, I totally agree with him. And I think it comes back, it, the, it really boils down to... Like, or her, look, or her, black strap, we don't know. Oh, <laughs> we, look, we don't know. Let Nick speak to that. What's your thoughts? Somebody it's calling me, Bobby. Pros, <laughs> it's pros and cons to both sides. Like I mean, I, I want to know your Republican. view. I want to know your view on this right now. What's your thoughts to? What's your thoughts on just that? Or do you not have one? You didn't really think about it. I, I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Like go and like to me, like both both sides are full of shit. Okay, there we go. I can appreciate that. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing, though. I- I'm with you, Amber D. It- it's so it's so sad that it's like you have to make a decision on choosing. You have to choose. And I see the Democratic Party being a safe place. I see it being a safe place where the Republican Party and y'all know I hate politics. The Republican Party is like, this is what we're doing. We're revving it up and blah, 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 blah. And this is what we're going for. Do I agree with everything that the Republicans say? No. Do I see the benefits? I do see some benefits. Do I see some benefits with the Democratic Party? I do see some benefits. But watch where the benefit lies. What affects me personally? Usually it's on the Democratic side. That affects me personally in my community. So when Amber D says, yeah, we need to protect ourselves. Yes, we need, guns are cool. We're on the Democratic side from that view or that lens. I'm looking at my cousin. I'm looking at my family members. They got harmed by a gun. So it's personal because I'm in this space. Now, if I wasn't in this space, would I see it a different way and from a different lens? I probably would. Do I believe we need to protect ourselves? Absolutely, we do. Absolutely, we do. Just as what happened with um, Pelosi's husband. Mm. Just recently, Ooh. that was what day before yesterday. Yeah, that's they crazy. came in talking about Nancy, where are you? Well, the, her security was with her because she was gone. Then they came in there and you assault her husband. Mm. Should he have had a gun? And if he was to kill him, what would have been the outcome? He had a hammer, the other one, and, and you assault me in my own home. You break into my home. Watch this, and I ain't going to say what party. Standing for this, you break into my home and then you become the victim. Come on, we have to look at things for what it is and what benefits you personally, and that's when you make your decision and when you vote. Don't go with the masses. I, I ask and I plead with you don't go with the masses. Look at you personally. How does this or that affect you personally? Because here's the thing, the person that has to worry about the masses is the person that's being elected. And we tend to go with the masses. Let's help the people. Let's help the people. But the people aren't helping us. Let's help ourselves. And you vote according to how you will benefit. Once you do that, you know all is well. Back in the day, it was uh, Cam- uh, Bush was talking about the whole, um, if you work for Social Security, your Social Security should be saved for when you retire, I was with that 110%. I was like, thank you. Because you have people who don't work and then boom, now they out on social security. Now they collect your, I worked two jobs since I was 16 years old. 
And then by the time I'm able to get Social Security, there is none. none, And I worked for it. Is that fair? That's not fair. So I'm going to vote accordingly at that moment or your future. Make a plan, as Amber said. Make it a plan. You should have a plan. How is this going to work? 401k. A lot of people put in the 401k. Hey, check your 401k. Let me tell y'all. Because it's dwindling. Because I looked. I'm like, what the heck? Mm. Did I pour, Did I borrow against mine? No, but mine is dwindling. But somebody somewhere is borrowing against theirs. Yeah. You know, and it's like, eh, what do and we And it do? shouldn't be taken from yours. That's the thing. Like, when people borrow, it should... Why is it being taken from everybody else's? But watch this. It it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It should. But watch. It's an institution. It's an institution. So it's the whole trading. Y'all need to focus on that. Watch the trading. Watch the stock stock market. We're gonna have a show, and I gotta give it to you on um, financial literacy. I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do it soon. Because even if you don't know, even just start basic. Write your stuff down. What's your outgo? What's your income? Because even with those like the Bitcoin and uh, what's the other one? I can't even remember. Crypto coin. And you're like, okay, nobody even sees this. Watch this. Nobody even sees this. But it's being transferred. Numbers are being transferred. And it's like, oh, wait, one wrong move or one wrong number or clinical error will jack you up, i.e. Tyler Perry. Remember, he just fired his uh, accountant, he paying all that money for them. And then he found out that he got audited. He found out that his accountant, the IRS owed him 9 million. Thank God it was that direction. But right. this is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So you have to watch it and watch how those things are being transferred. Watch how your money, the wrong, let me tell you, I went to the doctor on the 27th. They told me I weighed 313 pounds. That's what they ain't no way. Listen, it was all good though, because I needed it for this analogy right now. That computer said 313 pounds. So the doctor looker was like, wait a minute. I don't know how I gained 150 pounds in three months, but <laughs> that's what it said. Okay. So she was like, oh, wait, that's an error. So I get on another scale because they all digital now. Boom, it was accurate. So here's the thing. We have to look. What do we see? Don't, uh, weak mind, I got to bring it back. You can't have a weak mind. That computer said this and it's always right. So this is what we're putting. Put it in my chart, she did. She put it, I was like, and the doctor was like, oh no, we got to change this. Why? Because guess what? That little clinical error, 313 pounds. I come back in three months and say, and they'll look and see 150 weight loss. They're going to be concerned. Now you're like, oh, wait, why are you losing this much weight? Because I never weighed that. We got to right. use what was given to us. You got to use them. What do you see? And that's what that doctor did. And up front, they was cracking up laughing. It was like, oh, my gosh. Let's get on this scale. But you can't believe everything that something, a computer, or someone tells you. What do you see? What's in front of you? And that's Listen. the point of today's show. Look at what's in front of you and don't allow something or someone else to tell you what you know you see. That's why I had to put that there. I was like, yeah, y'all need to fix that because you're not giving me no medicine talking about something I lost 150 pounds in three months when I come back. I am that. I, I'm compliant. I'm a compliant patient. I'll come back. I'll come back. But yes, it's important, especially with diabetes. For my lovely people, I am a type 1 diabetic. So if you have type 2 diabetes, I recommend you follow a good diet, exercise. You don't want no kickstand if you don't have to get one. You know what I mean? This stuff is real. You want all your fingers. You want all your toes. I like sandals. Type 1, we're kind of like stuck. You know what I mean? So diet and exercise, diet, it helps. Exercise helps. But we're just like, this is what we have. Unless God determined... Hey, guess what? I got something for you, Mel. You know what I mean? We're type two. You could do something about it and you could get out of it. So, and make sure you go to your appointment. It's the hardest thing to do, though. It's exercise hard. has always been the hardest thing to do. And keeping an exercise regimen, it's always been the hardest thing to do. I'm talking about with the diabetes and everything. It is. But 
exercise and diet. I mean, I listen, that ice back cream look good. Myself in the gut. Mm. Do what you got to do. Do what you can do. Stuff is nasty. Let's be real. Flaxseed oil is disgusting. Um, but it's like, oh, do I take it? Oh, just don't taste good. But I tell you what's worse. What's worse is when your my like last night, mine always dropped. My blood sugar drops. Bam. All the way to the bottom. Be like 37, 40 in the middle of the night when I'm not working. Mm-hmm. And thank God. That he'd be like, hey, wake up. And you could kind of, just like Nick, you had experienced that. When you wake up out of your sleep, the body is an amazing thing. To say, hey, something's yeah. going on. Who wants to be eating candy in the middle of the night, drinking juice in the middle of the night? I'm serious about my teeth. It works. You know what I mean? It and you know, that sugar will sit it on works. there and trying to get it up. So now, guess what? I got my 20-minute sugar boost at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now I'm looking around. I'm the only one awake. Boom, you know what I mean? Because right. it's like, oh, for 20 minutes, ready to run around. You just don't want to do it. So if you have the option, if you're able to do, do. And I know it's hard. And just Nick said it. She told y'all the truth. It's hard. It's a hard thing. But when you're looking around and you're giving people the finger just by waving because the other ones is gone. <laughs> Yo, I'm just saying what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You'll be like, oh, okay, wait a minute. She said giving people the finger just by waving. Yeah, okay, because you only got one left. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And, and I'm vain. I'm vain. So it that stuff matters to me. Ah, it it exactly. matters to me. So please, people, like, take care of yourself. Look, I love you guys. Look, I'm like, I love you guys. We had a great show, great topic. Um, any last words? Do you have any, uh, Amber D, for this uh, black? Well, answer the question. Is there black white supremacy? Oh, yeah. I mean, Dave Chappelle's skit was hilarious, but it was also true. <laughs> it was like, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> was it Clay and Bixby? I mean, come on. <laughs> That's what we need to start calling. You went right, the artist formerly known as Kanye to Clayton Biz- Bigsby. <laughs> <laughs> which, which you got, uh, Nick? Question for you. Hmm. Uh, be comfortable in the skin you're in, so we don't have this mess. Like you're black. Be comfortable with being black. Act accordingly. Like. Shut your mouth. Just certain things. Should we really? What about that, the, what about freedom of speech? Freedom. Okay, and when is that? Whose door is Kanye open? In, Can no, we, my uh, the car. Oh, um, Kanye's freedom of speech got him in this predicament that he's in now. So just be mindful of what you say. Yes, freedom of speech. Yes, but be tactful about it. Because as you can see, you attack a race, they coming back at you. Ours, we just like all over the place, like whatever. I don't like this song, so anyway. Go ahead, we got so, many, we got like, thirty seconds. Go ahead, Amber D. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom of consequences. Boom. Yeah. And uh, okay, and the church said Amen on that. <laughs> okay, today's footnote: If a plan doesn't work. Change the plan, not the goal. All right, and author is unknown. I want to thank my co-host. Let's give it up for the lovely up in the top, what right or left corner? We have Nick the Voice. Thank you for coming on, baby doll. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the lovely Amber D that always giving us the. The analyst, you seen her raising her pencil up <laughs> earlier, like, hold on, wait a minute. So thank you to Amber D. Let's give it up for her. Round nice. <laughs> and I gave you today's footnote, and I love what Amber D said at the end. Freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of consequences. All right, lovely people, that is our time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. And if you like the show, you can look below. There's ways that you can donate to the platform. And it is all at Shop Talk with Mel. Like us on all socials and visit us on our our podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast, okay? Find you, embrace you, most importantly, always, always love 
you. Until next week, people, you know what it is. Shop Talk every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon.